And now for your televisual delight, we present more percussive-related buffoonery in episode one of the new season of The Drum Fat Lear. <laughs> My name's Mike Ellis. I have a problem. I rescue, refurbish, restore and revitalise vintage drums. In particular, Premier drums. In this programme, I'll share with you my adventures, ups and downs, ins and outs, triumphs and tragedies, as I lavish some TLC on vintage British drums. Welcome to The Drum Fettler. Hello! Yes! I'm back! We did some really dodgy plea bargaining and they let me out! So, here we go with the new season of The Drum Fettler! Isn't that absolutely fabulous? Now look, we don't have time for much messing around here. We've got lots of exciting things coming up and I need to tell you about them all. So, pay attention! We've got this incredibly exciting project. It's so exciting, it's been such a terrible secret that I've had to keep close to my heart and under my hat. But now we can reveal all, but not just yet. We'll be coming back to that a little bit later. But first, there's one thing we do have to do, and that's get stuck in to this rather lovely P1 snare drum. Now we have here for your delectation, in this rather dusty, dirty, spider webbery box, a snare drum. Now you remember the HR9 from the last season that I'm still working on. Um, well, around the same time, or a couple of years just before the HR9 came out, there was the P1, Project 1, and this was another one of the revolutionary snare drums that the Premier came up with. And we did touch upon it when we talked about resonator snares because it had the inner liner like a resonator, but not. It wasn't a resonator because the support rings were a lot bigger and the chamber was therefore bigger. So what we have in here is actually a P1. So it's one that I acquired many years ago and it came to me in a terrible, terrible, terrible state. Really was a very poor condition. So I decided to do something rather unique and distinctive with it and that was to use a piece of blue sparkle wrap which I happen to have knocking around. Not doing anything useful and it ended up on this ear, very drum. It looks quite nice and I was very pleased with the result but it's not original so I'm considering refettling it back to a proper colour. The badge situation I don't know what I was thinking when I did that I mean it's not even a proper grommet so we can sort that out. I must have had these knocking around a surplus of them. Oh that's right yeah I remember somebody asked me, said, oh, could you get me a lot of these little Premier stickers done? I need lots and lots of them. So I got lots and lots of them done. And then I never heard from the client again. So that's all right. Money down the drain. Who cares? We have this. Now, you can probably see the inner liner is not too clever. It's the original inner liner. And that seam is awful looks terrible. The drill actually sounds really not really nice so it's only a cosmetic issue. However I think I'm going to give it a full fettle and have a look through the archives to see what colours were available. See what we've got stashed away in the wrap store. It's got the original wires, the damper wires, um, and these were adjustable by way of these wing nuts but the wing nuts aren't original I seem to recall when I got them the little terminal screws were missing so I had to make do with some wing nuts but I think in my box of snare wire, ah oh yes there we go, I've got some, that's what they're supposed to look like with these little terminals on there, yeah that's a a little ongoing side job as well to add to the list that already exists. Have you even got the 
original and correct damper, external damper, the felt's a bit um, past its best, but I can sort that out. I can put some new felt on. Not a problem. Okay, so we'll uh, let you know how we get on with it. So, the exciting project. Well, I can reveal a little bit to you now. Not all. I'm not going to give away exactly whose it is, but what I can tell you, it is a kit that you will recognise, especially if you're into your premiers and you are of a certain age. It was presumed lost for a long time, but it has turned up and I am going to be restoring it to its former glory. I don't know exactly what condition it's in yet because I haven't gone to get it, so I'll be going fairly soon to pick that up. It is a kit that I believe most Premier aficionados will recognise instantly, straight away, and it's from one of Britain's greatest rock bands and quite thrilling to be a part of it. So, what I do know is the sizes are, I believe, 10, 12, 13, 14, 16 and 18 floor toms and a 24 inch bass drum. So it's a rock kit. I believe it's not been stored in the best situation, but that's not important because it's been found. It's what you might call a barn find. So all I need to do now is get in the jalopy and go out and get it. I've got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes, it's light, I'm wearing sunglasses. Hit it. On the road. Um, I've just got to open the gate. safely back to um, Blenheim Towers and uh, in here ooh, there's some lovely drones let's get them unloaded shall we so the drums are here now you can't get to see them just yet but the wrap has arrived now we're replacing the wrap the same colour so it is a restoration and this might give you another clue as to whose kit it really is Remember how I was telling you some time ago about the Premier lacquering in the 80s? How I reckoned that they made the outside lacquer ply flat and then put it on the drum afterwards because the heads would fit really tightly. Well, looks like I was right um, this little job I've got here. I decided I know what to do. To make it possible for modern heads to fit, I would remove the lacquer ply. How hard can it be? Just find the seam, chisel it off. Hm. No such luck. Of course, you know, Premier's great build quality is really well stuck on. So, tried a number of methods of uh, with hammers, chisels, and everything, and I thought I'm just going to do some real serious damage to the shell here. So, with the, the big sandy machine here and the slightly smaller orbital and then finishing off with the palm sander. It's the only way to do the job properly. There's 
a little area here that I prepared earlier. It's come up quite nicely. But by Jove, it's a long process. So if you're thinking of removing the outside ply of lacquer off a Premier drum in order that you can make the heads fit better or re-wrap it, because if you try and wrap it, if you put the wrap on, you've got no chance of getting the heads to fit. My advice to you is don't. 14 inches done. All I need to do now is go through this uh, little thing of metal bits, clean them all off and get them fitted back on the shelf. Well, I think that's looking a lot better. Only another 15 to go. Once I've got all these lug washers cleaned up, they will obviously be fitted inside the drum. They are an untreated steel, that's why over time they get discoloured, sometimes quite rusty. But what I'll be doing is, once they're attached, the inside of the shell will be getting a coat of lacquer anyway. The coating of lacquer will seal the washers and stop them from going rusty in the future. First drum's done. Just letting the lacquer inside dry off, and then tomorrow we can put the heads, hoops, rods on. Tune it up, and who knows, maybe even hit it. I'm going to put the old heads back on for now until we've got the new ones through, uh, just so we can get the drum together and see what it looks like fully assembled. go. That looks better now, doesn't it? Nice one. Right, now we need to have a quick look or take apart the P1. I think what I'm going to do with the P1 is the hoops are in great condition so they'll be okay. I'm kind of thinking I'm going to keep the blue sparkle even though it's not original because I've had a look at the colours that were available, the original colours, and none of them really get me very excited. The blue sparkle is very nice so I think it's a good tight fit anyway so that is going to stay. We're going to need to replace the inner liner so that's going to be an interesting little job in itself and also as you will see it's been painted white. Now, I'm pretty certain I didn't do that. That's how it came. Someone before me did this. So that's all going to need removing. So there's quite a bit of work to do on this little fella. So, better start taking it apart. As you'll no doubt recall, the P1 has an inner liner and a big sound chamber in it. Now, the original inner liner I did put back in because I didn't actually have one at the time, and since it was for my own personal use, I wasn't really too worried about it. But it is actually quite tatty, it's a very poor join, so I'm going to replace it. So now I'm going to take the inner liner out. As you can see here, it's actually hanging out already so I don't really need to go through the usual process of slipping a blade and there we go. That's come out very easily. You want to see inside the shell? That's really good. 
The other thing I'm going to change is this rather unpleasant arrangement of the Premier logo and whilst I'm here I'm going to get rid of this modern vent. Now I'm hoping that I've got, and if I haven't got I will acquire, a plinth badge because I've got some new badges, some new old stock badges from the right era. I just need a plinth to put on here. Okay, now, same again for the 13 inch. Well, as you can see, it's stripped down ready to go. Let's get stuck into that 24 inch bass drum. It's a 24 inch shell, all stripped back, ready now for wrapping, but before we do that, we're going to have to do a little bit of work on the inside of the shell because it's a little bit mucky in places. It doesn't look too clever, so we need to get that sorted out before we get on with the wrap. Before we do that, Right, back to the B1. Now what we need to do next is replace the inner liner, or to give it its full technical name, the bendy woody insidey bit. Now as you can see it's got red felt on it and it's felt red. Now the reason for this is, as explained by Premier in great detail, um, well I don't know what the reason was. In fact, I think I'd go so far as to say it was never explained why they did that. Reasons never adequately explained to us minions or lowly people. We don't need to question them, they knew what they were doing. Anyway, right, so I need to make a new one of these. So I'm going to use this as a sort of template, but it's only to get the right piece of wood. And I need to get the right piece of wood out of my big tin of woody bits which is over here. Big tin of woody bits. Right, what I'm going to do is have a quick look through here. There's all sorts of leftover inner liners, some new parts there, but I'm hoping that I might be able to find a piece that I can use these leftover bits. Oh, what's this? That's going to be big enough. Hmm. There's a possibility there, but it's painted white, and I don't really. Ah, what is that? That looks. 
like a contender. Oh no, there's another one there. Let's just have a look. Oh God. That's way too small. And that's painted in white, which I don't want to do because the original was painted white and we don't want it white. But here we have a lovely new bit of bendy woody in liner in the sidey bits. So let's see if oh that is just perfect exactly what I need. What a tremendous good news. Well now I've got the right bit of wood for the inside bendy woody bit the inner liner I can put all of these away and we can get out our very sharp knives and start cutting the bits of wood to size that should be fun ambulance on standby well that's it for this edition Kitty Winks it's great to be back firing on all three cylinders. Oh, and all this exciting stuff. The P1, the super secret yellow kit. Have you guessed whose it is yet? Bet you have, because I think you're jolly clever. And by Jove, you're looking really good. Have you lost weight? You're wearing... Oh, you're wearing a gas mask. Hmm. OK, well, anyway, I'll see you in the next edition of The Drum Fettler.